Hello again, listeners, and welcome back to the Kodo Classic FPL podcast. I'm your host, uh, Bruce, and as usual, I have my co-host, Mr. Chama. But Nakab. We are good, man. No bad, man. Hey, need a boy. Boys are not smiling. Things are things are looking grim. Like a grim. <laughs> well, it's looking good, yes, but yeah. not, so, but not, not, not terribly bad. Not terribly bad, I think. At least yeah, but hit, you know the World 50, Cup. Fifty plus points was in the bank. <laughs> the World Cup is coming, and you expect to, you know, at least uh, leave the World Cup or, or at least uh, break for the World Cup on a high, you know. But um, seems like this past few weeks, not so, not so much. Everybody's complaining, so I mean we're all in it together anyway, so that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it, it, <laughs> it, it, it is it is general. It is general. Everybody is complaining. Yeah. But I think go, going into the World Cup, you are in a in a very safe position. After the World Cup, you can start your season afresh. Everybody has so a fresh start after the World Cup. Fresh start, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. And you have well, all the you have all the chips in the back, like all the important chips after the World Cup. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think after the World Cup, it's, it's a new season. So looking at that, you have a head start, kind of, right? So, yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully it continues and it gets better. Because, you know, you never know. It can be a game of two halves. <laughs> game of half two halves, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. But yeah, let's, 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 re- let's remain optimistic and hopeful. Yeah, that that's, gonna true, be, that's true. Yeah, it's going to turn out well. But yeah, game week, game, week, game week 14 was a bit of a disappointment. Uh, football-wise, FPL-wise for me. But yeah. Let's get it. Let's yeah, get well, it. <laughs> let's get into it. Yeah. So we are recording game week uh, 14 preview. So um, 13 has passed. Uh, the games are coming thick and fast. We have only about um, three game weeks uh, from now, 14, 15, and 16. And then we'll, we'll go on a break for the World Cup and then we'll return back for 17. Okay. So first things first, uh, let's look at some of the results for game week 13. Yes. Yeah, this is like uh it's funny. It's like almost all the big players blanked, <laughs> and then all the players that people didn't have uh hauled, you know. As you can see, you see um Aston Villa, uh, uh Brentford 4-0. I brought in Tony. So I, I don't I don't understand. I heard he was really poor. Or maybe Brentford were really poor, anyways. And yeah. Aston Villa. Away from home, to be honest. Yeah. New man- you can say a new manager bounce because uh, Gerard has left and now Aston Villa seems yeah. like a, a attacking team. Everybody's, you know, Where buzzing. Where come from? Uh, was, I don't, I don't know. Was flying. I don't know. Yeah, the, 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 like the cheap players were all doing well all over the place. It was yeah, supposed to be an, an Almiron, but all over the place. Uh, all over the place, yeah. Uh, players, Bailey, all Bailey. of them were doing okay. Yeah, you yeah know. all these uh, cheap players. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Danny Ings. It's not cheap though, but yeah. You know, so... Leicester also 4-0 away from uh, to, to Wolves. I mean, yeah. Madison. Madison is just... Uh, is it not annoying? Annoying player to own, really? Yeah, he is He is really annoyed. Like, you know, you, I got him. You know, if he didn't take that red card, we all would have, have him right now. For yeah, the, you know, because, you know because of the, 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 the suspension. Yeah, so I got him into my team because they had a really good run of good run of fiction. He was on form. He blanked two game mix. And then he missed, missed the game. I took him out. And then he's back and then he's caught. Yeah. It's like you can't, I don't know, you can't really, it's a hit and miss with these players, man. You know, um, so the shocking result for me is uh, Newcastle beating Spurs at home. It's very shocking. You know, I, I didn't expect that at all. Yeah, when I... What's your boy? Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely, definitely. It is it is shocking, but yeah, Newcastle have torn a corner, you know. They have, yeah, they are playing well. Like the week, the previous week, they went to Old Trafford and drew 0 0. And uh, this yeah. week, they went to Spurs, so it was already, already a, a tough one. And I can remember when they played Liverpool, too. It was a very it was difficult game for Liverpool. Liverpool won yeah. the game 2 1, but it was very difficult. Liverpool won the game actually in the 90th minute. Man City, they drew 3 3. Man City could have lost that one, so they are kind of becoming the big boys, right? <laughs> they are becoming that kind of the big boys. You can so see they, signs, yeah. They, yeah it's like Man City when, when Man City just started uh, uh um, getting. You know, bold when they had the change of ownership and they had the uh, injection of cash. And you can say Liverpool, I mean, not Liverpool, Newcastle, the team hasn't changed much from last season. They just bought really good it, players. That, yeah, that is a surprising bit because yeah, it's basically the same team, just a yeah, the same, team, but mm-hmm. the same players. Like, no addition, the yeah, they have because of the money, the mentality yeah. changed. I don't the know. Mentality <laughs> changed, yeah. I think, I think so too. They, I think the, the players want to be part of something bigger, so they are, they are stepping up. You know, uh, the Almirons are doing well. Like, uh, who, who, what's this guy's name? The striker, the big striker, is now a midfield. <laughs> Joel and <Dave>. Dueling. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw him, I was laughing. It's so funny. <laughs> He's a midfielder yeah. now. 
Yeah, how does that work? And, and he's very impressive playing in midfield. It's I think that is, that, is, man. that is a position he is more comfortable with than being in the oh, okay. to score the goals. He's not even involved in the goals, but his his overall team play it's, is yeah. His is, performance is, is is very impressive to be honest. Yeah, you but know? for me, I think uh, the, no. the, the surprise one was uh, Liverpool, of course. Uh, oh, man. Not, not in half well, like, like, like the, this was the game. The league, huh? This was the game that I was like, oh, but finally my Salah pick is going to come good for me. You know, let me go sit back, relax, and enjoy this haul. And then when I woke up, I saw 1-0. I, I couldn't even believe it. I, like, that was like, I think that's the start. That's how you know that your gaming is going to be not good. <laughs> Maybe terrible. Not terrible, but not good. Because... If a game that Liverpool is supposed to be winning and they end up losing, you, what what can you say? You know, yeah, it was a so, difficult one to be honest. Like, and again, they considered five big chances. Like they considered five against West Ham in midweek or last mm-hmm. midweek, yeah. And then again, they considered five big chances against 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 Nottingham Forest, which is really not good enough. Uh, like Liverpool game now is is becoming like like some some point they call it a toss of a coin. Like they throw the mm-hmm. coin like. Nobody knows who's gonna win. Uh, it's like a basketball game; it can go either ways. So, which is like they lack, they they lose control of their games, and uh, that is quite telling. It's not so good for Liverpool, yeah. but yeah, I cannot wait for the World Cup to World Cup break to happen. I am glad. I'm just glad that they qualify for the Champions League next round. We didn't want to go to Napoli without the qualification. So thank God that they won against Ajax. And it was very tricky that game too, even though the the, the results did not say that three zero. But yeah. Yeah, the less said about Liverpool, the better for now. <laughs> Especially this game. No, we'll, 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 we'll talk about your team when we get to the fan corner. So you explain a lot about what is happening and you can understand as, you know, um, let's say fans of other clubs, maybe you have a better, obviously you have a better insight as what is going on. Because I was excited last 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 week. Oh, Liverpool is back, you know, but then this happens. I guess it's football. You guys are probably adjusting. So we'll talk about that later on. Yeah, yeah. but Everton too. <laughs> um, let's talk about Everton too. Like, yeah, Everton, my money will- yeah, you know, I have been very critical of them because, of course, they are... Yes, they are, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah honestly, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, so that 3-0 result was a big, big surprise for me, especially against Palace, especially against Palace, who... Palace is a pretty, good Like, a, a very difficult team to play against, right? And Everton, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, very convincing in that game, won 3-0. It will be, like, now he's their midfielder. He, Lampard, you have to give him clearly for for it will be, for turning a the corner there because yeah, I think somebody called it Michael Cox. Uh, he's a he's a tactical pundit. He said mm-hmm. two three years ago that Iobi's best position because of his attributes as a player was a midfielder, and now somebody mm-hmm. has realized that a manager has realized and he's played it will be as a midfielder. He's he's exceptional this season for for Lampard. He I think he has three or four or five assists so far in the season, and he has a goal too. So yeah, he is flying to be honest. He scored against United. A very beautiful goal, I can remember. Yeah, yeah. Also, I, I think he, yeah, cool. Lampard deserves a credit for turning EOB into a midfield because we all knew him as a winger or something like that, you know. And all of a sudden, he is like thriving as a midfielder. That is exceptional, to be honest. So where, where does he play? Like a like a um in the midfield, like a like midfield, a midfield eight? eight now. He's playing like a midfield eight, wow. and he's thriving really well in that position. That's good. That's and, impressive. I, I very know. confident. If you see his assist over the weekend, he got two assists in the game against Crystal Palace. The second one was just exceptional, exclusive, like a flick. It was like one v one with the keeper. They put a through ball for him. One v one in the keeper. He just flick it backwards <laughs> and then like kick out all the defense and the goalkeeper. So the I don't. I cannot remember who who finished that goal, but he just has to. All he had to do was just push the ball back it's into the net. Deep. Yeah, oh, he has been very very impressed and Im- impressive to be honest. It will be, and he's doing it in FPL terms too because he's giving points with here. Yeah, he's giving points. And yeah, goes yeah. Here and there. yeah. So that's what you want. I think Lampard. I think you were you were criticizing them or like um maybe it was warranted that you you said what they said about them because they were not creating chances like one chance in like two or three games. But I feel like they. I think two they, games they, they had zero shots on target, so that was yeah, good yeah. before this game. Mm-hmm. I I feel like they they needed to like okay be defensively resolute in the beginning and then gain their confidence and then they can go ahead and start maybe maybe scoring goals yeah. because like since last season when he took over it, it's been a problem because they have been bottom you know uh, the second end of the the table for a long time since last season. And you know now maybe you can see this is just the, the the first game that they've started showing some signs of like having goal scoring prowess. So let's see how it goes for them. Yeah. I I don't really I don't, I don't really want to see Everton <laughs> relegated to the, to the to the um championship. But yeah, I think they're a big team. 
It's good so to have them around. Who do you see? Who do you see struggling for the relegation? I think Wolves now is looking like a very relegatable really? team. Wolves, yeah. It's like a different Wolves to me. Like when I watch them play, I don't recognize Wolves at all. Wolves used to be a very difficult team to play against. Like, ex- like for the past, I don't know how many years they've been in the Premier League. They've been very difficult to play against. But now it seems different. Like all of a sudden, it's so easy to play against them. You know? Yeah, I, th- I, I think for me, the reason for that is mainly their uh, mindset change because they used to be a team that tried to be very organized defensively, score one goal yeah. or two goals here and there, and they win the games 1 0, or they drew 0, they drew 1 1 <laughs> or 0. You know, they, they were not a, a team that is very exciting going forward, exciting but to they work, were yeah. very difficult to break down. And now they want to mm-hmm. like change that, you know, that style and they wanted to become a attacking team, stuff like that. That's why they sell Kono Cody, who is now thriving very well at Everton defensively. Everton. So because he can only play in a midfield three or a defensive three. So when they took mm-hmm. him out of that team, they brought in new center backs to try to change their system to a four, four at the back. And that has not gone well for them. And um, mm-hmm. now they are struggling defensively. They have sacked their coach and uh, you don't know where they are heading to. Wolves, to be honest, I don't know where they are heading to. They are losting games. Like, look at it. This is at home against Leicester, four zero. Leicester, come on, man! I, you know, yeah. that's. I, I mean, uh, I, I don't I honestly don't know what to say. Um, because they have an identity, like you said, the way they play, and now they want to they want to change the way they are playing. It's gonna take time. Yeah. And I don't think they have the funds to like quickly make um that change. You know, so. The coach they had was a really, really good coach. Maybe his time was up. They didn't give. I don't think they gave him enough chance to be honest. Because um, watching the way they play, it's not that they play extremely bad. Um, but then I just feel like they 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 don't really score many goals since I've known Wolves. You know, they hardly score goals. And since this guy Jimenez like um had his injury, he's never been the same player. Exactly, and he's you still know, out. So... He's still out injured. <clears throat> they brought in Costa. Costa is no is no more the Costa we Diego Costa is not. And now Diego they are Costa. still struggling to have a manager. I think they sacked their manager a long time ago. Even Aston Villa yeah, sacked Gerard right a couple a week ago. Now they have replaced Gerard already, with, with yeah. Unai Emre. Wolves, we mm-hmm. don't know where they are heading to. Something has to change at that club or else Something I think I'm afraid yeah. for them to go down. Even though yeah. with the players they have at their club, I don't think they should be a team that should be going down. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um. Okay. I think we have discussed that. Uh, it's been an interesting um, week with these small clubs having these big, big scores. But yeah. Hopefully, it's just a blip and we'll get back to the top six scoring all the, the wonderful goals for yeah. FPL. <laughs> yeah, as as two are starting to, you know, lose their touch. Get uh, tired. They're, they're getting, yeah, they're getting, they're tired, getting huh? tired. They getting tired, huh? They drew yeah. one and they lost it. The energy, the yesterday. energy is not there anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the energy is, is dropping. Uh, energy, I think they, they, they also lost. need the World Cup. They really need the World Cup right now, too. Yes, Even yes, though it, yes. might be, it might not be great for them because of their players. They have a lot of players who will be involved in the World Cup. With the form they are on, their countries will play them. So if all these players were to go to the World Cup and then they come back, it might not be ideal. But also looking at their season right now, the way they are dropping in terms of form, they had they had two bad performances against Leeds and then against mm-hmm. Southampton, and now they lost against against PSV in the in the Europa Cup. So they are kind of dropping. So for that reason, maybe they they need the World Cup. But again, too, you can see a reason why they will not need the World Cup because of the number of players they might lost uh, mm-hmm. during this World Cup because of their countries calling them up. Yeah. So yeah, I think the intensity they started the season with, you know, it's difficult to maintain yeah. if you don't have a big squad. Because what's going to happen is the players are start going to going to start picking up injuries, and then once you start having injuries in the player, it's going to disrupt their form, and that's what you don't want. So we already seen the injuries happen, so that's that's going to be a thing to see how they manage those injuries. But yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, Leeds today are struggling. We, we need to mention them a little bit. They, but they but they won. I mean, they won against Fulham. I mean, no, I'm lost. sorry, they lost. They lost. They oh, lost I thought they won. Fulham. <laughs> Even though they played very well against Arsenal recently, uh, they lost against Fulham against Fulham at home. But Fulham are doing exceptionally well. They are ahead Fulham of are us. Doing well. They are I'm ahead of us, well. I think. Uh, I'm <laughs> not sure about United, but they are ahead of Liverpool in the table. Hmm. And they, they were very excited about their their, their manager, their Jason March, the American guy. So um, I don't know what's what's going on right now. I yeah, think yeah, yeah. they also He's... have injuries, injury issues too. You know, with uh, Bamford not not really being uh, fit all this while, and uh, Rodrigo has been their player, but he also since he came back from injury hasn't really picked up that form. 
Yeah, he scored wow. in the he scored in the weekend. Bamford too, uh against Arsenal, he missed a lot of chances. He missed a penalty, he missed another big chance in that game. I think two or three big chances. And this game too against Fulham, he came on in the second half at one one. He missed a very, very big chance, which he should have scored. Like he's struggling for confidence wise, but mm. I think they need to keep playing him. And once he starts scoring goals, I think it will it will, yeah, it will, he, he will definitely coming, coming Do you forward. think they do you think they miss um uh, what's his name again? The guy that went to Barcelona, what's his Rafinha. name? I'm forgetting it. Rafinha, you think they miss him? Uh it's a difficult one to say. I'm not sure they are struggling for goals because they are scoring goals, right? And they are creating enough chances. So I uh, in that on that context, I don't think they miss him in that way. Yeah. It's difficult. I think they are continuing in a lot of goals. So I'm not sure that scoring Anything is the right. problem. It's more about defending goals. Defending their okay. their goal is, is 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 the bigger problem. So yeah. I okay. Think. Um uh so let's move on to our teams for game week 13 and see how well we did or how poorly because this game week was indeed the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I for me personally I got <laughs> nine fifty three points. Uh I think uh it was not the worst one <laughs> but it was not great either. Uh I had Ward at least got the goalkeeper goalkeeper position right. Ward I started with Ward over Pope uh eight points. In defense I started with the double Liverpool Trent was bench which I am a little bit pissed that I did not know that he was benched because uh the team was leaked, but I never checked. Considering this season I'm having, if it was last season, I would definitely know that he will not start. But I did not check on you know Twitter stuff like that, so I did not know he was in starting. Then I started him. That's why I'm disappointed with Castanias twelve points on my bench. But yeah, man, yeah, that's a yeah. lot of points. <laughs> yeah, that's a, lot, that's, that's a lot of points because if I knew Trent was benched, obviously it was Castanias who was gonna start because I have to play three defenders. And uh, yeah. Kukarela too gets subbed off in the first half against against uh, Man United, which was also not not mm-hmm. ideal. So I got one point from him. Uh, Robertson with two points, Salah two points, Eze two points, Foden also bench one point, Mart- Martinelli two points, Mitrovic six points. So Mitrovic and uh, Haaland were my only outfield players to deliver. Haaland, of course, obvi- like fortunately for me he was the best player in my team and i captained him so which everybody did every every everybody did every, 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 but at least i got those points so yeah that helped me to get to 53 points which was not bad considering how many bad performers i have in my team so 53 for the week a lot of a lot of um uh, a lot of own players didn't really do well unless you have a differential team you know yeah. then obviously double those uh, those other players but to be honest, the template or the semi-template didn't, didn't really do well. Definitely. So if you didn't captain Haaland, that means you would have really fallen off. You know, absolutely, the absolutely, three absolutely. points. Yeah, so I also um, had 52 points. Yeah. Uh, points. I'm really happy with Ward. Yeah, he's just doing the business, but I don't expect him to keep a clean sheet against Manchester City. <laughs> so, so let me just forget about those points this week. Uh, Eight points. Uh, Cancelo with two. Trippier with two. Uh, Dorothy with uh, one. My midfield is just uh, very annoying. Instead of two, two points, at least they gave me one, one point. Salah with two. Zaha one, Foden one, Saka one. Uh, Captain Haaland, 26 points, which is like a community property at this point. <laughs> Tony with two, and then <laughs> Mimitrovic with six. When I looked at my bench and I saw Andreas, I was like, why didn't I just, you know, uh, you know, it's in, in hindsight, you can say that, oh, I should have played Andreas, but there's no way that this will happen and I also start Andreas over any of my midfield players. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's just the, the truth about this. But um, yeah, not really fun at this point. But yeah, um, moving on to the Koto Classic uh, Mini League, uh, Manager of the Week. Yeah, Karim, we... Karim, 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 Karim Bojang. I think it's, it's Sonny's son is, son is brother, Sonny's bigger brother. Oh, I didn't okay. know he was, he was part of the Koto Classic Mini League. But I, 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 cool. I, I think it's him because he's in UK. So yeah, Dreams, d- Dream Team, Wanderers, Karim Bojang. Wanderers. That's yeah, nice. 90, 99 points. That was massive, right? But he played the bench. Massive, so it yeah. was a good week to play the bench because of a lot of bench points. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a very good week. Yeah. Most people had like the, all the points in the bench, on the bench, yeah, you know. Yeah, so it's yeah. like annoying. <laughs> exactly. That's perfect timing, you know. Perfect yeah. timing. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> he, he had in goal Pope with two points. Uh, Trippier, two points. Uh, Creswell gave him six points. Oh, eight points from three, from Creswell. Creswell, oh, where did that come from? Oh, they kept the clean sheet. West Ham, yeah. And uh, Cancelo with two points. In midfield, he had Eze, uh, two points. De Bruyne, nine points. He scored that wonder goal. 
uh, Bowen three points and Almiron he had him with ten points back to back ten points for Almiron wow. he is flying this season and then up top he had Mitrovic six Jesus two and Haaland captain with uh, twenty six points and the bench was Ward with eight Trossard with seven Ben Me who did not play I think he got zero yeah and uh, Castania twelve points so yeah it was a good bench boost good, uh, to be a good bench boost team, yeah yeah not unexpectedly because I would not expect this bench to score this number of points especially in that that is true like, yeah it's yeah. not really like a uh, exceptional but they they did it in a week where you yeah, played it yeah, yeah. Where, where you don't expect it it, it, it turns <laughs> out good right so yeah. congratulations to Karim Bojang uh, yeah, course, yeah. go to play. classic manager of the week and uh, game with mm-hmm. thirteen yeah. And then the Code Classic Mini League table. Mm-hmm. Top five, yeah. Um, I think there's a movement there. Uh yeah. in fifth we have moving to fifth actually is McManaman. Yeah. Dropping to fourth is Patrick Aurora your guy. And yeah. um also dropping to, to third is uh old Roger. And then moving to second is no ret- no retreat handcuff. Where did this guy come from? From nowhere. <laughs> from nowhere, yeah. He got 74 points. That was massive for this week. Yeah, Good, man, yeah. Sure. And then um awareness FC, Mohamed Dampas still holding it down. But he had a bad game big though. But yeah, yeah. I think uh, 38 that was that was a bit a little bit low even yeah, for but, it, but it's good that the people around him also got got a bad game. Also, also got the yeah, lower points, points, yeah. So yeah, at least he yeah. still keeps the lead. Yeah, at least yeah. Yeah, That's fifth good. place is 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 tied. I think fifth mm-hmm. place. You have Chisco FC. Oh, we have like Oh, two, 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 fifth, two. Oh, okay, Chisco FC is also on fifth, on fifth. Yeah. Uh, it's also in fifth position. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are we honest? FC is is holding the flag, the Gambian flag up there. So, yes, yeah. yes, definitely. Keep it going, keep it, keep it going, man. Yeah. Um. Okay, so let's move on to our uh, fan corner. Uh, I think we just briefly talk about uh, Liverpool and Manchester. I think we've already mentioned a few things about Liverpool, so you can just tied up for us. Um, what is happening? Like, why are Salah loyalists not doing well? <laughs> because at this point, <laughs> I'll call us loyalists. <laughs> you know, uh, a quick thing. I was I was looking at my mini league and I was like, okay, um, oh, some of my players, um, some of my the managers above me, um, they they don't have Salah. You know, they yeah. gambled it, took him out a long time ago, and he's doing well. I was like, okay, this week, man, I'm gonna, you know. Close that gap, you know, yeah, because he doesn't Salah, have yeah. that. I'm sure he was scrambling to get him, but there's no way you can get Salah if you don't plan for him. Yeah. Unless in a wild card or anything like that because of the price. And then this week, this happens. I was like, maybe he was right. Maybe he knew something that I didn't, you know. But yeah, tell us about what, what's happening. Yeah, yeah in for, a nutshell. Yeah, it, 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 like the, the Nottingham Forest game, when I saw the lineup, to be honest, I was not like so excited. Because of the, mm. the team that I saw, you see, like you know, when I see James Milner, even though he played very well against Man City, if he does well, if he plays well, I'm always coming to, you know, give him all the praise he wants. But I never expect him to play well at this stage of his career. I don't expect him to, to be playing well. And yeah, he started the game. He did not do badly. He started at right back. Trent was on the bench, <laughs> and uh, in midfield we started with Curtis Jones, who has been out for more than three months. And he had to play a new role. He had to play a whole 90 minutes because we did not have players available. Thiago got like on like an ear infection or something like that. You know, these freak injuries that are keep happening at Liverpool. You know, it's it's just so annoying that when you just think you are about to, you know, hit that stride and then keep going and then you start having this kind of thing. And then Harvey Elliott was there and then uh Cavalio started also. So I think that this team was like kind of too old and too young at the same time. There was no like you want to have he enough experience, is, yeah. but with mm-hmm. enough legs yeah, in the team. Balance, yeah. you, know, you have a lot of legs with those young players, of course, but the experience was not there. And then you have players like Gilles Milner with a lot of experience, but the legs are not there anymore. So it's difficult to 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 to, to compete in the at this highest level with those kind of players. And uh, I I think that cost us the game. Of course, we could have scored. We have a lot of chances, a lot of set piece chances. Van Dijk, like he did not get his bearing right. He got three big chances from headers, and he missed all of them. But the uh, Nottingham Forest, the goalkeeper was exceptional too. So you have to give them credit for that. They defended well. But I think Liverpool should have scored in that game. They created the chances to score. But also Nottingham also, they played well. They deserve, they deserve the win. Yeah, Liverpool are struggling. It's difficult to pinpoint something like this is the problem. There's a lot of problems going on there. Then we come out in the it's Champions League, like yeah. I said. We won 3-0 against Ajax convincingly in a game that we needed very badly. And now you come this mm. week, players are back from injury. Ibu Konate, Thiago is back, and you know, then you will expect you will expect something again against Leeds, 
which usually is a very good fixture for Liverpool because of yeah, entertaining because match, of, yeah. because of the way Leeds, yeah. Leeds, Leeds play. So yeah, I I I I cannot explain anymore. But yeah, I'm just hoping that the World Cup like like come and Maybe the players, much needed break that you guys get need, that yeah. break we need and then get back the players we we have injured after the world cup diaz uh jota those players they all come back and then maybe we maybe we will have we have a new season like you say it, it could be two se- seasons of two halves the first half was so bad for us and maybe the second half of the season could be much better so that's the only thing but yeah again in terms of fixtures we have leads we have southampton in the next three game weeks at home so these are both these are two fixtures that liverpool like usually do well on because of the way these two teams play the other fixture is tottenham tottenham themselves are struggling you see what they have yeah. what happened to them in europe what's happened to them last week against against newcastle so Liverpool have very good three fixtures to to end the season with tottenham now have to play the next champions league game with pressure right because if mm. they don't win they, they get eliminated and after that they play liverpool liverpool don't have to win their champions league game liverpool will rest players for that they're more relaxed and yeah. get ready for for the tottenham game so if you look at the fixtures it's favorable for liverpool going into the final into the world cup so for that reason even salah with the form he is his form is so bad he's they doing keep, very well yeah. in the champions league though mm-hmm. he's the leading goal scorer in the champions league. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't, so, yeah. so, surprisingly <laughs> he's scoring he's outcoded Haaland in the champions league by the way so you, you you never know so maybe he might just get that touch back in these three fixtures but yeah it's there is not much to be optimistic about just hope yeah okay but um okay, i think you i think i think you you've 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 really summarized everything so that's it's a good thing that you you mentioned that so that us seller owners and the loyalists can, i can call them can <laughs> can keep because to be honest if you're looking at the fixtures there's no point in selling at this point they just keep you know because you know you don't want to miss out you've hold you've, you've held it up until this point and then you sell and then you, you're in trouble you know it's like you're in mid 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 uh in the midpoint you sell when seller is just getting the form back that's what people are scared of yeah you know um liverpool i mean sorry liverpool. Manchester United though, yeah. Uh, we play Chelsea. A very tricky fixture because Chelsea Graham Potter is like a a manager, a new manager that likes switching his his, his uh, yeah, strategy, nice. and I think that that's that's what he did against us. I didn't watch the game to be honest because I it was watched, too early. For me. I watched a bit of it. Yeah, but yeah, I think that was what happened. But we did dominate them in the first half. I heard yeah. so it was like all out domination. So for the first time, I can say that okay. It's not easy to dominate Chelsea. We all know Especially that. At Stamford Bridge, yeah. At Stamford Bridge, so yeah, you can. I can. I can tell you that we are doing very well as a team. Like the players are believing in the manager, what he's doing. But we need that finish. We need to start scoring goals. Mm-hmm. That is the just the next step. I kind of feel like Rashford is like not a striker, but he's there, like doing a job. But uh, you, you know, it's like one of those strikers that you have, like Suarez. The season before he started scoring goals, he was just yeah, yeah. missing. Yeah. In the bar, like doing everything, but the ball actually going Good. into the net. Yeah, was, was, I feel like yeah. it's just a matter of time, yeah, before Rashford gets to that 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 level. What are your thoughts on our game since you watched it? Yeah, yeah, I I I I did watch uh that part where Manchester United was dominating before Chelsea made the <coughs> change because Chelsea started with three at the back, and then Manchester dominated them in the middle, of course, because they had more numbers. They had more numbers, like like more players in the in the middle. Man United play with the four three three, and Chelsea play with three. Four, three, four, three. So which means they had two central midfielders. So Man United kind of overloaded the midfield in that way. And Casemiro was exceptional in that game. To be honest, he yeah, was very, he was I, very I, good. I, Man United completely dominated. And then Potter saw that in the first half, he made the change. I think thirty-five minutes or something or half time that Casta uh, uh, Kukarela left the pitch and then uh, Kovacic came in. But from that part, I did not watch. But from my understanding, from others who watched the game, Chelsea did come in and started dominating a little bit because they had okay. now. Kovacic, who is a very good, man in midfield, yeah. who's a very good ball player in midfielder, yeah. So, but it was a, it was a very like it was a big game for Manchester United because of like mm-hmm. like you say it has been a long time since Manchester United went to a big team and then dominated the game and dominated, and yeah. That is yeah. what happened in that game. Manchester United had to go out in that game. They did not deserve to lose that game. That's why the, the last minute equalizer yeah. was yeah. very well. That's why, yeah. That's why, yeah. That's why, yeah. Equalizer for, for for United. So, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm quite impressed. I think that you are guys, you guys are making step. But then you, you come in the Europa. I wanted to mention a bit about your your boy Anthony. I think he's making a lot of headlines. <laughs> <laughs> That's what everybody is talking about. Yeah, everybody is talking about it. But, they, but apparently, some United you know, fans don't want people to talk about it. But it's it's worth talking about. What what did you make of it? To be honest, like I don't think it's a big deal. Uh-huh. You understand? 
it's not like a, a game where we were losing and we needed you know to to, to score and he was just uh, messing about you know yeah. it's like people are football has come to a point wherein people cannot mix do skills anymore that's why i i hate when people like you know uh like neymar i, I enjoy watching neymar play because there are not many players like him anymore in football everything is tactical it's you no know, you have to be you know technical there's no time to even do a skill if you do a skill no you shouldn't do that you know it's yeah. meant to be enjoyed you know let's yeah. enjoy the skills that's why i would like also like support that's why i started supporting brazil because you know ronaldinho and them when yeah. you when they play, you, you you feel like you want to be in the game with them because you enjoy it so nobody can do just one small skill <laughs> you know even like even though you know even even if he had done the the skill and then maybe pass and then it was a goal maybe nobody would say anything but because he passed and it was a, a mal pass they were, oh, okay you know you shouldn't do that but the coach said that you know it doesn't matter if he if he if he does it, but as long as it's pro- is is productive, which is yeah. true. You know he's a young player. You know obviously, if he's doing it to waste time and we are we are winning in that part, maybe fine, it's productive. But yeah, I mean I don't think it's a problem at all for me as a fan. Nothing at all. I enjoy I like the skills. If you were chasing the game and then you were like you know one nil down and your time is going and then you do that, fine. You you shouldn't do that in that circumstance. Circumstance. But yeah, it's not. I don't think it's an issue for me. <laughs> no, definitely, it's not. A, it's, it's not an issue. It's the same with me. It's not an issue. But like, like my point was just like the necessity. Why? Why do you do that? Not, not necessary there, at all. There's no necessity. Like, like people were saying, like some United fans, of course, we tried to defend it. Like, oh, he was trying to open up the defense by doing that. I don't. See no, that. no, 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 no. I don't, I don't think so. That is just, <laughs> just some unnecessary no, no. skill. You know, if no, it no, is no, yeah, no. product, like yeah, that's why I say it's if just, you do it in these circumstances. Yeah. And then you do everything right at the end. No problem. It's, it depends. But, it depends but if you do it unnecessarily, like it's, it's so it makes you just like Panenka, right? If you come and take a Panenka penalty, and then the goalkeeper wait for you in the middle and hold the ball, you, you, miss, you, you, look, you look silly. Yeah, you look yeah, stupid you look and silly. Stupid. Exactly. Yeah, have, if you do it, you have to make sure that it is in. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. you have to execute it perfectly well. So if you don't execute it, people will criticize, and that is that is the thing with him. So yeah, it was not, and you know this kind of thing sometimes it kind of. Uh, how can I say this? It becomes an attitude sometimes. When you don't need mm. to do it, you do it because you you kind of build that kind of you know, just like Ronaldo when he was younger. You know, he likes to dribble. He, he used to do a lot of those uh, you know, unnecessary step you know, yeah, yeah. Stepping over. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> later he realized that this is not necessary. I yeah, have to yeah, do it and do what is ne- what is really necessary. And that's that's how we. I, I, I think he will. I think he will. I think he will learn. Yeah, he's young. He will learn when to do it and when not to do it. It's just a matter of time. But I, I think exactly. the coach is saying. The coach is saying that to back him, but eventually, like uh, behind closed doors, he's gonna tell him that hey, you need to know when to do these things, you know. Because exactly. if you if you if you if you do it and we are leading like four uh, zero, exactly. you can do something, like that and then and then maybe the opposition will will, will foul you or you know commit a and foul. Then the and then the fans you know, start yeah, yeah, you start yeah, yeah, you understand that. Yeah. Pump, pump it but me, even when you see when he did it after that, you can see his face, the disappointment he had in his face, like. He feels silly himself. That what, the, what am I doing here, right? Uh, he kind of feels that way. He can, you can see in his face, and then he started pointing at at at, at wrong thing there. But yeah, that that was. It, it is nothing nothing serious, but it's just about the necessity, you know. When it yeah. is necessary, and you you have to do it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he's a good player. I think he's having a good season, to be honest. He he, he has having a good, a good attitude. I think there's there's more to come from him, to be honest. Um, he's just still getting comfortable in the league, so we'll definitely. See. Um. So moving to our game week fourteen preview, uh, yes, let's look at the the the, the fixtures that 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 are, that are uh, okay fourteen yeah. But these are the teams that are playing. Um, man, uh, the one that I I'm, I'm just obviously you know the Liverpool Leeds is the one that I'm really <laughs> interested about because I want I want to prove the the people that don't own own Salah I want them to be <laughs> okay penalty is what is what having him yes finally you know. Well, yeah, that's that's the player for most Salah owners right now is that he returns in the next three fixtures so that at least we can, you know, have you know, something brag to... about yeah. being loyal. But yeah, you know, yeah, yeah we need something before the World yeah. Cup. To be honest, he need to he, he yeah. really need to give us something. Definitely. He really need to. But but the Leicester Man City game is because it's gonna be interesting. Leicester are kind of picking up a bit of form, kind of. Man City are having a bit of a few injuries uh, here and there with Haaland flagged, and you know, I think uh, I don't know who else was injured, but then. It's Man City, you know they score a lot of goals, and Leicester have been poor this season, especially defensively. But in other pre- other 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 seasons, uh, I think about two seasons ago, they they beat 
Man City five one. Yeah, they are yeah. yeah, they are yeah, they are a kind of a boogeyman for United for City. They yeah, it's kind of it's, it's kind of weird, you know, when they play, it's, it's like what you expect and what happens is two different things. Especially Madison is usually oh. up for this game. I think last season he mm-hmm. scored two against City two in the Etihad. Uh, they lost six three. Yeah. I remember, but he was on fire. Six three, right? Yeah, that was a very you know weird weird game. But yeah, um, any other game that uh interests you? Yeah, in this fixture. Yeah, I think I know. Uh, Nottingham Forest did well against Liverpool, and Arsenal are struggling. <clears> but <throat> I would expect Arsenal to do a job on them. Uh, in this fixture. Uh, but yeah, it will be it will be interesting and see, to see how Arsenal how Arsenal and, and also Chelsea. Potter is going back to Brighton for the first oh, time. Oh, back there. to Brighton. So, yeah. Yeah. So that that, that could <laughs> yeah, be an, be that could be an interesting fixture, right? I'm sure it's gonna get it's gonna get booze, you know, <laughs> a lot of booze by the fans. But it's going to be an interesting game because, like, you know, uh, the old Potter meets new Potter because apparently the guy that they picked is almost plays something like something similar or an, a, a step ahead of Potter in like the attacking you know, the way he attacks. So let's see, it should be interesting. It should be interesting. Um, it yeah. Should be interesting. Uh, another one is um, let me see. Uh, Fulham Everton, two teams that are doing ticking along nicely. Not Everton, obviously, but Fulham are ticking on along nicely. Yeah. Everton have just have just like, won three zero in the last game. So yeah. let's let's see how how what, what happens. If Everton do well again, and it will be is also at the heart of all these um, the plays. I mean, you never know. You I can I can just or decide <laughs> to just you know take a punt and yeah, bring him in for the last two game weeks, man. The last you two game know. weeks, uh, yeah. Right. Because <clears throat> right now they're trying to get an edge, you know, try to see like where we can where can we get two or three players that can just make the difference for us in between, you know. Yeah. Because yeah, at yeah, this yeah. point, people people have almost the same template team. I'm I'm just realizing this. If you see like the mid, uh, the average for game week thirteen, mm-hmm. was it? Uh, yeah. It's not. It's at fifty two. That means that a lot of people are having the same type of players, especially in midfield too. Same. Yeah. It's you know, so it's, it's time to make a bit of change or tweak the team a bit yes but yeah yeah um moving on to the captaincy matrix sticker let's look at the fixture <clears throat> let's look at the fixture ticker for the last three game weeks first then uh we'll yeah. the captain matrix sticker Man City at the top of the ticker they have fulham brentford in the last two games after leicester and so this is not mm-hmm. always like come on that we have the best team in the league ha- at the top of the fixture ticker, yeah, it's, which is yeah. the case with Man City. Mm-hmm. so that means i think um Every manager will have three Man City players at this moment. I think yourself, you have three already. Oh, I already had my, yeah, already had I three. I have two, yeah. so I'm thinking of going for the third one, maybe after the Leicester game. But we will talk <coughs> about that when we come to our teams. And Liverpool are still up there. You see, this is the reason why you cannot sell Salah at the end of the day. He, mm-hmm. of course, uh, the reality is the Liverpool players, Trent, Salah, Robertson, all these players, they are not performing to the level of their price at the moment. But if you look at these fixtures, you cannot sell them if you have them already. And yeah, that's just it's, it's yeah. not even the bad idea to buy to buy them, to be honest, going going mm-hmm. forward into this three three. Because Leeds and Southampton, they are very good fixtures for Liverpool. You never know. That is that might be the time that they will hit the form and then you know, then then the World Cup will come. So yeah, I, I would not again I'm I'm not against selling or, or buying or or keeping the Liverpool players. I think if you have them, you have to keep at all costs. And if you don't, you can. You should even consider sell, buy, buying them. But of course, people will consider the form of players and things like that. Which, for me personally, I'm not usually the biggest fan of of, of form. I'm always thinking about mm. the the fixture. How good is the fixture? fixture and yeah. that the Liverpool fixtures are just too good for me. West Ham to uh third in the ticker. They have Crystal Palace and Leicester in the last two fixtures with um, at home before after, after the United game. So yeah. No, not a lot of great fixtures other than Man City and Liverpool, I would say. West Ham is not great because Crystal Palace is a difficult fixture, in my opinion. And Leicester too, they are doing well. Man United is not easy away from home. Bournemouth, Tottenham, Leeds and Everton. So, yeah, I think it's yeah. Man City, Liverpool. I think you, ha- you have to load up on those two teams and then see what the World Cup... Yeah, it's only three game weeks left. So, you have to play three game yeah. weeks. And don't, don't think about the price. Just think about the fixtures. And you know the players that will give you the points, most points in these three three game weeks. Yeah, I I think I think you're I think you're right. The thing with Liverpool is that right now we all know what they're capable of. One, and number two, as a good manager, you should look at the fixtures and look at what you have. You can say 
there's no point buying them because obviously they're not on form. But if you have, I don't think it's a good idea to sell. <laughs> you just just stick with it. And that's why I went in there. I was I was angry, you know, after the the the, the results yeah. I saw. But I was like, okay, so who do I bring in now? Anyways, <laughs> you know, I already have three Man City players. Fine, you know, who else has a better fixture? Son and 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 Kane. Kane is sticking along nicely, but Son is not really the best. And look so at the always... fixtures. They have Bournemouth away. Liverpool, Liverpool. Home, and then Leicester on these away. Yeah. At home. So, so yeah. their last fixture is good. Maybe in the last game week, but now might be a player you yeah. might want to punt on, you know, because they mm -hmm. play these at home. Uh, but looking at the full out fixture this weekend, then they have the Champions League in between, then they have Liverpool. I think for now, it's an avoid. The full out, yeah, like, no, the, the, the Bournemouth fixture is good in a way, but still with the Champions League in <clears> between, <throat> it's, it's, it's quite tricky for me to go to that now. But yeah, yeah. Um. So looking at the, the CMT Captain Symmetric sticker for for fourteen. Oh, it says Salah. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it, it says play. Salah number one uh, against Leeds. Uh, we all know what this fixture is capable of. Like a lot of goals scored in, in the past two or three seasons. So nothing, nothing. Um, nothing uh, surprising there. Second yeah. is uh, I think Arsenal in this against. Fixture, I think in the last two seasons he scored. Two goals and uh, three mm. goals. So he kind of scored five goals against Leeds in the last two home fixtures. So mm. if that means anything to you, uh, uh, I yeah. mean, yeah, at, at, at this point, yeah, you know, it's <laughs> it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one for me to be honest. But yeah, um, second is uh, Jesus against uh, Nottingham Forest. Third is uh, Cristiano or Bruno against West Ham, and fourth is Kane Son against Bournemouth. Fifth is Zaha against Southampton. Sixth is Mitrovic against Everton. So, yeah, no, yeah. no Haaland because of, yeah, of course, <laughs> fixtures at the start of the season. We expected Le Leicester to be a better team and especially they were playing. At <laughs> but it, it turned out they were not. But recently, yeah. they have kept four clean sheets in the last five yeah, months. They've, they've done well. So they yeah, have improved well. defensively. Mm -hmm. Not on the underlying mm -hmm. data. <laughs> like, if they have been they still give up big chances. chances and everything, yeah, but they have they, been they, they, But they have been keeping clean sheets, which sometimes... Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, you have to be be bala eating, bala but, yeah. Bala so. but yeah, for me, I will always look at the underlying data and see, oh, this is scary. They are not mm. doing as well as we think they are. They are just being lucky because they are not conceding the goals. So I think they will make concede. It look like they are defending well, what, what they yeah. are. Mm. I think they will concede against City, but the problem is, can they beat City? Can they score more goals? That's the thing. And, and it seems like they can based on history in the past two or three seasons. So, you know, they've done it. Yeah, and Haaland, you know, he was limping, limping after the City game. Yeah, that's the thing. He's he got an influenza and then he was limping and he was tired, according to Pep Guardiola. Um, mm. He went to hospital and then checked, but they say he was okay after that. Pep's press conference today, he said Haaland should be fine, but they have to train later and then see what happens. So, we don't know. So, he might I, not start I, then? He might, he might not start. Or, if he starts, he might not play the whole game. But mm. yeah, as like everybody have him, eighty percent of the managers. If you have him, you gotta play him. And I, I know many managers are gonna captain him. And of course, I am not. <laughs> but oh, really? You're not gonna captain? <laughs> no, no. Of course, I'm not in the Haaland. I'm not. I'm never in the Palmer captain mindset. Not even last yeah, year when Salah was doing well. So it's always about who I think is gonna do well, who has the best fixture. And in this week, it's not Haaland. So I'm not gonna captain him. That's the. That's that's my. That's my. It is my, my 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 secret this uh this 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 season has been the to be really um going according to the captaincy metric sticker. If you if you notice, especially my captaincy, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there's there's maybe one or 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 two uh, instances where I haven't really gone according, but I've been really checking it to see okay which which one uh, which player should I captain, and right now I don't see Haaland here, and because all these things you never know, <laughs> I might go with Salah. You know, um, let, let's see what happens. But yeah, the, the, the ticker is there for a reason, you know, <laughs> you should try and follow it. But okay, Um, <clears throat> lastly, let's go to our teams for or our draft post team for Gaming 14. Yeah, here is my team. 
Uh, Pope is, is back into the lineup. Uh, word is out. So, yeah, again, just like the captaincy, my goalkeeping situation too is like, who ha- who has the better fixture? Of course, better if you have Pope, have, have one, you will always want to go with Pope, right? Definitely. This, yeah, this game, make, yeah. If yeah, I have exactly. another keeper, I'll probably make, play. Like, play so, I go back to Pope. Yeah. But last week, I was with, with Ward because Ward has the better fixture. So, the way I treat my captaincy is the way I treat my goalkeeping situation. Sometimes it does not work for me, but that's what I do. And uh, in defense, I have Cast- uh, Cucarella starting. I'm, I'm so I I really want to sell this Cucarella guy because he never start he ever plays the whole game. He keeps like I don't know Chelsea. I, I'm really disappointed with Potter and Cucarella the way he's using. Potter, I think I think Potter is trying to figure out what's the best way or what's the best formation to get the best out of the team. And he has a lot of pressure because Chelsea is a bigger team. There's no, um, what do you call it, patience. So I, I think he's just trying to move things around to see which one is the best way. So right now, I don't think Chelsea defense, maybe Thiago Silva is the only person that I feel like, and, and Kepa, but the rest is just... Yeah, Kepa, Kepa is a good good. pick. Kepa is a good pick. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I think this is going to be his last start in my team. And this is going to be his last week in my game, in my team too. So my plan yeah. for transfer, this week I'm not doing any transfer, by the way. I'm banking Same, the yeah. transfer, yeah. and then next week, when Man City have those two very good home fixtures, then I will attack mm-hmm. those massive fixtures and go with Cancelo, drop him. Um, Arsenal will also have very bad fixtures, drop uh, uh, Jesus and bring another an achiever forward. That's my plan for next week. But this week, I will go with Trent, Robertson, double up. Uh, they play Leeds, and Kukarela at, 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 against Brighton. Then in defense, Salah, or in midfield, Salah, captain. Uh, Eze starts against Southampton. Foden starts against Leicester. And uh, Martinelli against Nottingham Forest. Then up top, I start Jesus, Mitrovic, <coughs> and Haaland. The only thing I don't like is seeing Andreas on my bench because anytime I put that, I'm he, you, he man. Yeah, it's, but the reality yeah. is, I don't see any player he he can outscore. He a player easily, he has yeah. a better fixture than in my team. Yeah. Eze has a better fixture. Uh, Martinelli has a better fixture. Fordin, I'm not going to bench Fordin for Andreas regardless. And up top, I have Mitrovic. I would rather start Mitrovic than Andreas. Jesus play not in Ham Forest. I cannot bench him. Haaland. So the only hope I have is that Haaland does not play at all. And then Andreas come. That is my hope. So that then we see <laughs> every manager will have to rely on their first bench, right? If Haaland does not play. That is my that hope is that he misses out this game week. And then Andreas come in for me. Yeah, that's my team. I think I like my team. But of course, whenever I like my team, it does not turn out, <laughs> turn, turn out well. <laughs> So that's the kind of season you're having, man. Yeah. yeah. How how yeah. about you? What do you think? What do you think of the team? Anything? I think it it's, it's well it's well balanced. I think um with the exception of the two Liverpool defenders, I kind of feel like you could definitely do better with two Liverpool def- defenders at this point, you know. Um that that's the whole point. Your defense hasn't been good. And I feel like that might be the reason why you're not doing so well. Because mm-hmm. every the defense right now is Trippier and Cancelo and somebody else, you know. Yeah, and I think that, the, the, there's a lot of money tied up in this in this defense too, but yeah. yeah def- but apart from that, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I I I I I I agree with you. They have not really delivered, like I say. Mm-hmm. But again, they play Leeds at home, so this is not the fixture yeah. I I I I'll be thinking you, about. You would change them, yeah. That yeah. is true. The, the, the rest of the team, man. I, I mean, it's fine. To be honest, I like the SA pick, you know, because I ha- I have Zaha. SA has been doing very well, and if I didn't have Zaha, I would actually go with SA to be honest. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seems like a very good pick. Yeah, let's look at your team. Um, moving to my team, I don't have a choice. I have to play what <laughs> because <laughs> if I had more funds, I would actually change my second keeper to maybe Kepa or somebody else who has a better fixture. But you know, goalkeeping situation is not really a place where I really want to spend uh, my brain brain power. To be honest, I guess pick one <laughs> and stick with. It. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, playing a three four three. I have Cancelo, Trippier, and Doherty. Doherty was a pick because James was injured. I didn't really know who to go with. So he was just like, okay, he's he's okay. Let's put him in there. But Tottenham has been, they have been terrible defensively. So if I bank the transfer this game week, next game week, I might be looking to switch to somebody else. Who has a, maybe a, a Chelsea defender or, or something, you know, or somebody else who's more nailed um, because I'm not really happy with him in my team right now. Yeah. In midfield, I have Salah. I have... Um, uh, in this draft, I put Andreas, but uh, I was just trying to figure out things. But uh, Zaha is going to take his place, and Andreas is going to be first bench, and Foden, and then Saka. So my my midfield is good, you know. It's just Salah that has to turn up, turn up for me, and you know, give me some loyalty points. <laughs> but, um, cap- boss team captaincy is on Haaland, but uh, like with what you have said, or what Pep has said, you never know. I don't think I'll probably be. 
captaining him, but I'll leave it late. Yeah, I also have Tony and Mitrovic. Tony will say bench. Right. I have yeah bench. I have um Zaha. I have uh, Dunk and I have Nick Nico Williams. Mm. So obviously, like I said, uh, Anders is gonna go to the first bench for Zaha, and then yeah, same team. Yeah, so hopefully, solid, let's solid, 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 solid. <clears throat> Yeah. Yep. So um that's it. We've come to the end of the pod. Uh hopefully two more games before we have a World Cup break, even though it's a weird timing for the World Cup. <laughs> but yeah, it's that the final stretch before the World Cup. The final stretch. So let's get as much points as possible before we go on break. Because you know, yeah. Um, any last words, Chama? Before we close uh, the pod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just urging the, the, the listeners to again uh to support the Code Classic FPL pod and uh, the Jello Football Bantaba YouTube channel if you are new around. And uh, uh yeah. And may your arrows be green. I wouldn't say that in a while because I've not been doing well. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I wish you all a, a green arrow again yeah, in the upcoming yeah. game week. All right, there you have it, folks. Thank you for supporting the pod. Thank you for listening and for sharing the pod as always. We are the Code Classic FPL podcast and catch you guys on the next one. Bye. Goodbye, guys.